In today's video, I'm going to talk about five different RTX 5060 Ti graphics cards that I tested so far. The Eagle Ice OC and the Gaming OC from Gigabyte, the Infinity 3 from Palette, the Gaming Trio from MSI, and the Tough Gaming OC from Asus. So let's check them out and let's see what kind of features they have to offer and how they compare to each other when it comes to gaming performance as well as thermals and noise. Let's begin. The Infinity 3 is a very simple MSRP card that has a 3-fan cooler design and a no-nonsense look that will match well with a lot of hardware on the market. It has a plastic shroud and a very thin plastic backplate, and it is very light, so the build quality is not the best, and it does feel uh, very flimsy to the touch. And keep in mind, that is not something that will affect your gaming performance much, but I did expect a bit more from a product that will cost you more than $400 or euros. Since this is a base model version, you don't get any extra features either. Uh, there is no RGB, it doesn't have a dual BIOS switch, and it doesn't come with a GPU holder. It has three display ports and one HDMI connection on the back, and to power it up, you will need a single traditional 8-pin power cable from your power supply. The Eagle OCI should also be a base price model, which you can probably guess from its size alone. It is only 21 and a half centimeters long and two slots thick, so it will easily fit in a lot of small form factor cases, but it also might look a bit unimpressive in a larger ATX tower case. The PCB underneath is actually pretty tiny and I expect that the PC modding community might make good use of that. And I really like that Gigabyte is making white versions of lower tier cards instead of just the high-end model. So even if you go for a mid to low tier build, you can build yourself a nice all white system too. The build quality is okay, uh, this model does come with a metal backplate, but it is still a relatively simple card with not a lot of weight to it. And just like the palette, it is very simple. It doesn't have RGB, there's no dual BIOS or any other extra features. It also comes with three display ports and one HDMI port on the back, and it is also powered by a single 8-pin PCIe power cable. The Gaming OC, on the other hand, is a bit more premium model from Gigabyte. It is still pretty compact, and it will also fit in most builds you have in mind. The build quality feels decent uh, thanks to a metal backplate, and it is definitely a bit heavier, so they used more material for this one. You get a tiny bit of RGB on the side of the card, and you get a dual BIOS switch, but that is pretty much it. On the back, you get three display ports and one HDMI port, and it is also powered by an 8-pin power connector. The MSI Gaming Trio should also be a model with a bit of a price premium. It's a bit longer, but it is still a two-slot card. Uh, the build quality is similar to the Gaming OC from Gigabyte, uh, with a metal backplate and plastic fan shroud, which definitely fits a GPU in this price range. Now, you get a bit more RGB than on the Gigabyte, and you even get a small GPU holder in the box, uh, which is always very appreciated, in my opinion. You don't get a dual BIOS switch on this one, but that doesn't have to be a problem if the BIOS it comes with is tuned properly. It also comes with three display ports and one HDMI connection on the back, but this model needs a 12 volt 2x6 cable to power it up, or you can use the included adapter for two regular 8 pin PCIe connectors from your power supply. The last card in this roundup is the Tough Gaming from ASUS, and this is the largest card of all five. It is pretty long and about three slots thick, so compatibility might not be as good as with the other models. I really like the dark gray color scheme with some silver details, and just by looking at it, it definitely seems like the most high-end version of the bunch. Build quality is pretty good too, it has a metal backplate and a plastic shroud around the fans, and it just feels very sturdy all around. Now feature-wise, you do get a bit of everything, a little bit of RGB, a dual BIOS switch, and a GPU holder that is simple but very effective. It has three display ports and one HDMI connection in the back, and just like the gaming trio from MSI, this one is powered by a 12 volt 2x6 power cable as well. Uh, just like with the previous uh, generation, there will be 16 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte versions of the RTX 5060 Ti, uh, but I still haven't seen any 8 gigabyte models, so all the models we tested for this video have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And in general, uh, the 16 gigabyte 5060 Ti is around 33% faster than the old RTX 4060 Ti at 4K resolution or 24% at 1440p, which makes it a much bigger upgrade than the 4060 Ti was over the 
3060 Ti. So if you already own a 4060 Ti, I don't really think it's worth getting this one instead, uh, but it is definitely a nice step up from anything that is older than that. It comes with a new DLSS 4 technology with upscaling that is better than ever before because of their transformer model and the multi-frame generation option, which is as I said before, a very complicated topic that requires a lot of nuance, but it can be very useful in some games and not so useful in others. So again, it is a setting that you can choose to enable or not, and having an option to do something more is always a good thing in my opinion. So with an RTX 5060 Ti, you can expect to easily play everything at 1080p resolution, as well as 1440p, and you generally don't need to use upscaling, but I still think it is worth using it to get a smoother experience in those heavier titles at 1440p. And at 4K resolution, you can still play every single game on high or ultra settings, but here you will usually have to use a DLSS upscaling to get a decent experience. But the main selling point of this RTX 5060 60 Ti is its price. So it is the first card in this generation that is under that uh, $500 mark. So if you don't want to spend more than that on your GPU, uh, this is more or less the only option you have at the moment. The RTX 5070 is between 35 and 40% faster, depending on the resolution. But looking at the US pricing, it should also cost you $120 more or 170 euros more here in Europe, which is a big difference. But if you can stretch your budget that much, you will get a much stronger GPU. So the only real competitor at this price point here in Europe is the Radeon RX 7800 XT, which does offer more raw performance, but it also uses more power. And more importantly, the 7800 XT is a two-year-old RDNA 3 card that doesn't come with the new FSR 4 technology. And in any situation where you will want to use upscaling or where uh, ray tracing is involved, it is going to be a worse choice. And keep in mind, uh, we're going to have more and more of those situations with the upcoming games. So until we see what the uh, 9060 XT will do when it launches or something along those lines, the 5060 Ti will be a better choice. The standard boost spec of the 5060 Ti is 2572 megahertz, but as usual, that spec means very little and every single card boosts a lot higher than that. Now, the boost numbers will vary depending on the game that you are playing, but they were all sitting in that 2700 to 2800 megahertz range. Memory speed is exactly the same on all models, so none of these cards have an overclocked memory out of the box. And uh, if we look at the average FPS in games using the Palette Infinity 3 as a baseline. The Eagle OC Ice was just under 1% faster than the Palette, the MSI about 3.5% faster, the Gaming OC around 4% faster, and the Tough Gaming OC from ASUS was the fastest card with a gap of 4.5% compared to the Infinity 3. And keep in mind that these differences are not huge and you will probably not even notice that a 4.5% difference while gaming, but it is still a very nice bonus to have either way. If we add the power numbers to the mix, the differences are very small, with all cards being within 2% of each other. So that is also not something that you should base your choice on. All cards also turn off their fans in idle, so they are all completely quiet when they have nothing or very little to do. And none of these cards had any coil wine issues, which is always great to see and to hear. But under load, there were some big differences between these models. Now, First of all, none of them are really loud, but the almost 40 decibels of the Gigabyte Gaming OC in its performance BIOS is definitely audible, while the Tough Gaming from ASUS in its quiet BIOS is basically completely inaudible. The two cards that should be on the cheaper end are a bit more audible in general, but I think that sub 39 decibels is more than acceptable if you don't want to overspend on your GPU. Uh, the Gaming OC in its quiet BIOS is a little bit quieter, but for a dual BIOS card, I really would have liked to see the quiet BIOS being actually quiet, especially for a card that is typically only pulling 150 to 170 watts. MSI does a bit better here, but the Tough is clearly the card to get if you want something that is properly quiet. If we add the thermal results to the mix, so we can see that all of these cards show great 
thermals. Now technically, the Tough Gaming in its performance BIOS shows the best result overall by a very small margin with its scores at 57 degrees while keeping the noise very low. But realistically, it makes very little difference if your 5060 Ti runs at 57 or 64 degrees. Uh, they're all more than cool enough and I don't think that any of these cards stands out in a negative way. Now, since some of the new 50 series cards have a design that pushes the air uh, directly towards the CPU, uh, we also tested if any of these models affect the CPU thermals as well. And for this test, we use a 9800X3D processor with a Deep Cool Assassin 4 air cooler. And these are the results. We have a four degree difference between the coolest, which is the Eagle OC Ice, and the warmest, which is the Gaming OC from Gigabyte. And that is maybe significant enough to mention, but it is still a small difference that might vary a lot depending on your CPU cooling and on your system. And unless there is a model that makes a huge difference in this test, it should not influence your decision uh, at all. And I have to say that is usually the case in general when you start comparing uh, lower tier GPUs like this one with lower power levels. Uh, all the differences between different models are very small and the chance of finding a card that actually performs poorly is much smaller as well. So none of these GPUs are objectively bad and any of them could be worth getting if the price is right. So if we look at the US dollar pricing, the RTX 5070 should be about 28% uh, more expensive than the 5060 Ti, while being about 40% faster. And paying a small premium for a particular card is fine, but any premium model of the 5060 Ti that comes close to the price of a base model 5070 is just not worth getting. Now in the EU, the difference in price is much larger and the base model RTX 5070 should be almost 40% more expensive, uh, which leaves a bit more wiggle room for the premium 5060 Ti's, but again, Paying a big premium will not get you a faster card. If we just look at the results, the Tough Gaming from ASUS performed the best. It showed great thermals and it was noticeably quieter than the other models. So I would probably be happy to pay a tiny bit more for this card since I really like for my GPU to be completely silent. But a theoretical $60 premium will already put you halfway to an RTX 5070. The gaming trio from MSI is in a second-ish place. Uh, it is a little bit faster and has a couple of extras, so it can also justify a very small premium over the MSRP, uh, especially if having a quieter card is important to you. But again, that premium cannot be that big. So in general, if you're getting a 5060 Ti, the most logical choice would be to go for the cheapest 16 gigabyte model. So the Palette Infinity 3, the Gigabyte Eagle and the Gigabyte Gaming OC all perform perfectly fine and all three are quiet enough. And most importantly, uh, they will all offer the same gaming experience. And that is kind of what matters the most in this segment. So uh, keep an eye on the prices in your region before making a decision on which GPU to get. That's it. Uh, that is all I had for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new gaming monitor, the Xenion 34WQHD 240C. This beautifully designed monitor comes with a top-of-the-line 34-inch QD OLED panel with a subtle 1800R curve, an ultra-wide Quad HD resolution, 240Hz refresh rate, instant response times, and a near-perfect color reproduction, making it a great option for anything from fast-paced games to immersion games, from content consumption to content creation. And if you are worried about possible burn-in that is inherent to all OLED panels, Corsair has you covered with a three-year long warranty that includes burn-in. So if you're looking for a new high-end ultra-wide, please do check out the link in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end. I really hope this video was helpful enough. Uh, if you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.